Hi, good evening. Thank you for joining me on this very special edition of Why Are So Many People Dying and Where Are the Answers? Now, if you're joining me on YouTube, I was preparing this presentation for my paid Substack subscribers. So if you're watching live, you'll be able to see the full presentation. But I'll be giving you the overview of this, but I thought it was so important that I wanted to share it with you as well. So this is critical information and stuff that I can't explain how valuable it is for us to be able to understand. Essentially, what I'll be looking at is that I'll be looking at deaths and age-specific mortality rates by specific select groups. This is data from Statistics Canada. And so you can see the, the uh, website there. So I've taken it directly from their information page. I'll be looking at as well at the mortality rates. I've broken it down in terms of causes of death, broken it down by age groups. I've then looked at it with regards to specific codes, broken down by different age groups, and then even put it in together a chart to try and explain it. So this is what I'll be going through. And additionally, I'll be linking it to a paper here that is important about ill-defined and unknown causes of death. So this is a paper not at all related to the statistics, but helps us to understand exactly what this is about. Now, before I start, I'd like to highlight again that my most recent presentation with regards to abnormal physiology in the vaccinated heart is also connected to a relatively upcoming webinar in about a week's time if you're watching this in early January. If it's later than that, there should be a link to a course. This is the uh, important webinar. Now, in truth, as soon as I put up the tickets, um, the free tickets disappeared quite quickly. But uh, very importantly, in terms of the, um, the donation tickets, they're still available right here. And literally, any donation is appreciated, even if it's a dollar. Not that I'm encouraging you only to do a dollar, but for some people, maybe they can't afford anything else. And the support is appreciated, believe me. And so if there's anyone who has an interest, don't let the donation button uh, put you off. Give whatever you can. It's really still all appreciated. So let's get back to this issue as to why are so many people dying? So the first issue that a lot of people say is that, well, we don't really know if so many people are dying. It just seems that everybody is a bit more concerned about it. And this is why they're thinking that more people are dying. That's one part of the puzzle. But what are the statistics showing? And so what I say very importantly is I really appreciate those countries that take the time that go about making sure that we can get data that we can analyze. Really valuable because without that, how can we then make sense of what is going on? Some people think that it's just about curiosity. We just want to criticize what has happened in the past three years. No, for me, this is about clinical medicine. I need to understand if patients are dying, why are they dying? What is the mechanism? What can I do that could make an impact? So from my point of view, it's very different. This is not just curiosity. This is very, very important and needs to be linked to our practice of, um, of medicine. So let's go to what the statistics were telling us about. So this is it here, and I'll bring it up full screen. So it's deaths and age-specific mortality rates by selected grouped causes. And what they're doing here is that they're breaking down all of the deaths into various groups so that you can look at it. This is really valuable. This is exactly the kind of thing that we need. The UK is also quite good at doing it. Um, not so easy to get the statistics from the US. And certainly we are having problems with getting the statistics from New Zealand. They certainly don't want that broken down into cohorts vaccinated versus unvaccinated. But that's a whole different question. But the point is that without the data, how can we independently analyze what is going on? So let's look a little bit more closely at this data from Statistics Canada. So what they have got here is that they have got causes of death. And I hope you can 
you can read it and I'll try and make it a little bit bigger. Uh, see if it does. I uh, want second. Let's try and see if we make it a little bit bigger. There we go. That's a little bit bigger. So it's easier for you to see. So yes, we have total causes of death. And so this is looking from 2018, 2019, 2020, 21, 2022. We don't have 2023 as yet, but that would also be very valuable. So when they looked at all causes of death, in 2018, it was 285,700. In 2019, it was 285,300. So this looks pretty consistent. And I suspect over the five-year average before that, it would be about similar. In 2020, in the pandemic, yep, we see almost 20,000 more people died in Canada. In 2021, that's when we had the Delta, and as well, we start the rollout of the vaccine campaign. The death still increased. Now, some would argue that without the vaccine, it would have been much higher than 311,000, but the death rate did increase. Now, this bit, 334,000 in 2022, some link to Omicron infection. Now, Omicron should have been a milder infection, but in reality, it could have been more severe in regions that were highly vaccinated. We didn't see this occurring in, say, Africa, which had a very low vaccination rate. But the point is, you can see this trend from 2018 all the way up to 2022. And when you look at the age-specific mortality rate per 100,000, you can see in 2018, it was 770. And by the time of 2022, it's 858. And that's largely because not only are the numbers higher, but there are less people because so many excess deaths happened over this period of time. So it's an important bit to first understand what it is that they're breaking down. And they're breaking down all of the deaths over that period of time. But for me, I'm more interested, not just in all the deaths, but what is the breakdown for these deaths? And this is going to come to a really important piece of the puzzle when I speak about unknown or unspecified causes of death. That's the bit that really is critical because sometimes you say excess deaths are going up and people say, well, there are more suicides or there are more car accidents or there's more of this or there's more of that. Well, what does the data actually state? So let's get back into what it shows. So again, just before I roll on, you have here at the top the numbers of deaths and the age-specific mortality per 100,000 of the population. I'm largely going to be concentrating on the numbers here. So like, for instance, salmonella infections. There were seven in 2018, and there were 12 in 2022. Okay, shigellosis was only one in 2018 and zero in 2022. That's how it is. Intestinal infections, you can see there are less in 2022 than they were in 2018. So as we scroll down this, the big things, like for instance, sepsis, you can see here, it was about the same, 2020, 2018 to 2022. So this is 2022 here. And we scroll down here. If you look at another big one, malignant neoplasms, and you can see here 79,000, up to 82,411. And so that fits with regards to more cancers. But more importantly, from the perspective of 100,000 of the population, it hasn't actually shifted that much. As you continue down, so I'm, I'm highlighting that all of the things that people think are the causes are included or excluded, so to speak, from the fact that people are just randomly dying. Diabetes has risen. Dementia was probably about the same over that period of time. Major cardiovascular diseases did rise, but you can see that they, per 100,000, it was not as significant a rise as it was in terms of total numbers. So this is about 4,000 um, more. So you can see what I'm doing. It's broken down in sections by what is relevant in terms of what is going on, in terms of the diagnosis. So this leads me to the central point of this discussion.
When I talk about people dying, oftentimes they're referring not just to friends and family who are older, yes, they're dying, but it's also young people seem to be dying. But we keep on hearing that, well, is that evidence? Is that true that they're actually dying? This is the bit that makes a difference to me. So when we look at causes of death here, one of the causes is R00 to R99. It's an ICD code. And it's used internationally so that we can know causes of death wherever you are. And it's symptoms, signs, and abnormal clinical and laboratory final findings not elsewhere classified, unclassified. And you can see here in 2018, it's 4,800. In 2019, it's 4,800. In 2021, it's 8,000. It's then 10,000. And in 2022, it's 17,000. Now, that is not normal. What it technically means is that we don't know the cause of death. That's a problem. From a clinical point of view, that's an absolute red flag in my mind. What really is that? And to give you context as to what exactly they're talking about, I've got here a nice spreadsheet that shows you all of the R numbers. So all of the R numbers, uh, these are the ICD codes. You can see here from R0, abnormalities of a heartbeat. These are symptoms. So they are added on to, um, to code so that we can code patients appropriately. Patient may have gangrene of the leg. They may have abnormal blood pressure readings without diagnosis. Somebody may have a cough. So these are all symptoms. And as you roll down, these are all the way to 99. This is the urinary things, blood in the urine, retention of urine. This is not a cause of death. Why is it so much that 17,000? And as you keep going down, there's a reason this is important. You can see here headaches, even a seizure, not classified. You know, uh, hemorrhage, not elsewhere classified. That means not, not a traumatic hemorrhage, unusual that. Um, symptoms and signs concerning food and fluid intake. So these are all symptoms that are coded. But when you get to the bottom here in red, I've highlighted other sudden death, cause unknown, unattended death, and other ill-defined and unspecified causes of mortality. So when we talk about the deaths going from 4,000 to 17,000, this is what they're coding for. Other sudden death cause unknown. This trend that we're seeing in Canada is going to be being replicated across the world. It's just that there doesn't seem to be a focus or an interest on it. I really hope that changes because without some degree of us focusing on the relevance of it and identifying the clinical significance, how is it that we're going to get answers? The final word is this. When it comes to the abnormal physiology in the vaccinated heart, as I mentioned, and I'll be speaking about in the webinar, those changes in the context of how the heart was using glucose instead of, um, of fat is very, very significant. There is something going on at the level of the heart that needs to be addressed and could explain these abnormal patterns that we are seeing. So again, uh, thank you very much if you're live with me. Um, this is going to be on Substack. And if you haven't yet uh, joined me on Stub Substack, please, if you want to see the full presentation and you've not seen this live, please join me on Substack and you'll be able to get access to this uh, in the future. Thank you very much for everyone being with me now and have a great evening.